Hi, my name's James Ayres, I'm 39 and I live at Beethoven on the south coast of New South Wales, Australia. I believe that food is the most important resource in our lives. Everything we do is based around it, it involves family, friends, community, and yet we continue to treat it like rubbish and buying mass-produced, chemically and genetically manipulated foods from overseas, what are we doing to ourselves? That is why I buy locally and use a locavore ethic. Biodiversity in a local garden is vitally important. You don't have to grow one thing. You can have anything and everything growing in your backyard. Why not do it? We have a small microclimate here in Beethoven that allows us to grow anything from cold climate vegetables all the way up to banana palms, which I managed to get one of, and I'm going to plant it now. Where's all? Should be deep enough. Okay, that's nicely settled in and hopefully in about a year's time we should have some nice ladyfingers to go. Okay, now the banana's in the ground, I'll show you around our new vegetable garden. This is our new in-between seasons for the summer and autumn plantings and it's only about three weeks old. The rain we had the last two days has just been spectacular for it. Okay, this is the very, very end of our zucchini pot and I think we'll put that in some soup tonight. If I can catch it up. Very beautiful looking zucchini. This is our 11 tree fruit and, and stone fruit fruit forest. They're all multi grafts, they're all designed to produce as much of different varieties as possible and a bit of shade. This is our little strawberry patch. They were all in fruit baskets originally, but they were just drying out, so we moved them out into an open garden. Oh look, we've got a ripe strawberry ready to pick. Okay, this is the basil we planted three weeks ago. Some dill. The coriander that's been growing for about three weeks as well. These are very young chili plants. They're a sample that we got. It's a hellfire mix. Very, very hot. This is lemongrass. Definitely used in lots of Asian foods, curries, that sort of thing. These are native grafted finger limes, a native plant from Australia and very, very popular at the moment in cooking industry. This is our rosemary hedge. It's going to be growing up. It's very, very young at the moment, but it's mainly to keep away the insects and give us things to put in our lamb. Oh look, Helen, some asparagus. It's <laughs> well past its pick by date. Would you like to eat it? Lovely. Okay, now I've shown you around my garden, I'm going to head down to the beach and see if we can find some local seafood to cook for you. Hopefully there's some blue cockles out there today. Corrigan Speech cockles. Let's think about what we can do with these. Enough cockles to make a cockle butter? Yeah, I think a cockle ravioli would be absolutely spectacular. Cockle butter ravioli. Yeah. We've got to go back to the kitchen and start preparing. Okay, how about a crumble? We're going to get great. some fruit from our local providers. Yay! How are you today? Hey, good. Hey, how are you? Yeah, doing alright. Um, we're going to be making a crumble this afternoon. We'll just wonder if you have anything decent that will go with it. Yeah, certainly would be. Come to the right place. Just over behind you there, we've got the local Araluan peaches and nectarines. Oh, it's a nice they're range there. They're just... Araluan peaches just look absolutely divine. They'd be perfect with the rhubarb we've got. Thanks, Ben. We'll grab those. Yeah, no problems at all. That'd be great. Thanks James, enjoy. Yeah. We'll see you soon. Good luck Thanks with so the dish. Yeah. Well,
Yeah, okay, we'll just get some meat and some eggs from the butchers. Terrific, let's go. Oh my god. Afternoon, sir, what can I do for you? Oh, I think some eggs would be brilliant. Have you got like any? Free range or um, local? Eggs? Local, doesn't matter. So, I haven't got any eggs, sorry. <laughs> oh, well, what else uh, can I do for you? Oh, I could do is say two bags of 500 grams of sausage mince. Sausage mince? Yeah. Extra service, you like that? We don't want to get this. That's what we always get. Anything else I can help me, sir? Um, I think that'll do for today. No worries. That'll be $9, sir. Okay. Give me a discount. You got me on three, mate. Right? Oh, I think you This could be the start of a, a rag for you, for me. <laughs> there you go, dollar change. Here for your seat, sir. Thank you very much. You have a nice day. Yeah, Thanks you too. I'll see you later. See you Enjoy yourselves. <laughs> see you, boys. See you, boys. Okay, now we've made it back from the beach um, with the cockles. We'll sit down and make some cockle butter with sage and dill ravioli. And that'll also be followed up by a nice peach and rhubarb crumble. We'll put the cockles in the nice hot boiling water. And we'll add a little bit of white wine. This is just a Sauvignon Blanc. Just add a bit of flavour. Don't need much, about 200 mils. That'll just be about five minutes worth of cooking. And we'll just get on with the rest of the recipe. Okay, now while the cockles are cooking very nicely away in the background, I'll just get the dill and the sage and garlic ready for the butter sauce. So we'll just very finely chop up some dill. We don't need much, there's only 10 cockles. Cut it as fine as possible. It makes it easier in the end. Place it in the convenient bowl. Just crush the garlic. More than enough garlic for the butter sauce for the ravioli. Just chop it up nice and fine. We, we don't need to add any salt because the cockles should have plenty in them being a saltwater creature. And that's it. Until the cockles are done and peeled. Okay, the cockles should be nice and cool now after staining, so we'll start opening them. Most of them have opened, some of them haven't, but that's not an issue. They're a bit different to normal cockle, uh, normal shellfish. They're very, very easy to get out of the shell, most of them. Most of them open, some of them don't, they don't act like normal mussels, they are a little bit tougher. Okay, the final step of the process, we've just got to chop the cockles up very, very finely. A lot of people would leave them whole, but this is a self-sourcing sauce that we're making for the uh, pasta, so it's more of a mince that we need. Now, into the garlic and dill and sage. And we've got about 100 grams of butter here. Nicely softened, it's been out of the fridge for about half an hour. Makes it a lot easier to mix in. Just stir it through properly so it's all very nicely mixed. Pop it in the fridge and cool it and make a nice filler for the pasta. Job done. We'll be making a nice tomato sauce for the uh, consomme required for the cockle pasta. It's a very, very simple recipe, quite traditional. Just Chop your tomatoes in half. They can be very ripe tomatoes as these ones are. Put a little bit of olive oil in the pan so they don't stick too much. A couple of onions just for flavour. Just chopped roughly. Broken up over the top. Up 
five or six scallop cloves, don't worry about skinning in them at this process. They're just as fine. Some bay leaves and some freshly picked sage leaves from our garden. And a quick drizzle of olive oil. Be generous. And we'll pop it in the oven at about 160 degrees for about 15 20 minutes until they're nicely browned. Okay, we've got some nice local peaches from our local Provador that we're going to meet later on. And they're very simple to open, just a twist. The stone comes out, and that's done. Lightly chop up things so they can be a little bit quicker cooked. It's a good idea to grease up your tray. Start adding the fruit. These are local peaches grown in the Bait Haven area. Very, very good produce, sort of at the end of the season. There's a nice layer of fruit there, and this is rhubarb grown in our own garden that you'll see, or would have seen. Just cut it into sizable chunks. And lightly sprinkle it over the top. And we'll just do a layer effect and keep layering and going on as it goes. Okay, this is the best way to make a crumble that I found. Most people just use flour or some sort of sweet biscuit. Oats are the best. A little bit of shredded coconut for flavour. And I use a rapadura sugar which is the first pressing of cane sugar. About a quarter of a cup is enough and about 150 grams of butter. And you just break it up and then knead it through with your hands. And bring it all together until it gets nice and friable. And start constructing it. Okay, I have a, a cinnamon stick here that is very easily available. Just lightly broken over the top. A couple of star anise, you can do the same too. Just crush them up. If you've got a mortar and pestle or a blender, you can powder them. With this amount, probably one and a half smaller than enough. And a little bit of nutmeg. Finally, a little bit of zest. And a lemon. About half a lemon should be. Reduce that. And that can be lightly tipped over. And a lot of people like to add a little bit of alcohol. I'm using a Tasmanian pepperberry liqueur. And finally, the crumble on top. Evenly spread it over. And that can go in the oven, about 160 degrees for again about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, I'm going to make a buckwheat and spelt flour pasta dough. The flours all come from the um, rustic pantry in Maria. Very local product, all wholesale, whole food producer. We need about half a cup of each of the two flours. The buckwheat is too unstarchy to produce the gluten rich pasta that we require so I'm going to mix the spelt with it and it just adds an extra flavour and half a cup of the spelt we may need a little bit more spelt later on and always sift your flour add a pinch of salt to that now and to that mix we'll just add two full eggs just bring it all together. Nice fresh organic eggs, very yellow. I do prefer duck eggs, but chicken will do. And just knead it until it gets very smooth. You want to really work the gluten in the flour to make a decent pasta. This is the dough, it's been kneaded three or four times and rested for a couple of hours just to enhance the gluten of the flour. 
I managed to forget my rolling pin, so we'll have to use the best we have. It's a great idea to cut it into smaller pieces. Good mortar and pestle stain rather than a beer bottle. We just need to get it thin enough for the uh, pasta machine. This is my lovely assistant Helen, she's helping me feed the pasta through the machine. It's very easy with two people, it's quite difficult with one person. So we'll put it on the biggest setting, I think that's right. Yep. Okay. We'll have to work reasonably quickly now because it starts to dry out as soon as it's gone through. Now I'm going to use the copper butter that you saw me prepare earlier and make some ravioli. These cockles came from Corrigan's Beach, freshly caught earlier this morning and just chopped through some butter and some spices added, you know, whatever you like. Okay, that should be enough for now and we'll start producing some ravioli. Then you need a small amount per ravioli. Try and get them as neat as possible. Get a nice clean knife and something to shape the ravioli with. Squeeze as much of the air out so it doesn't burst or expand and cause the ravioli to fall apart. Just making sure that the pasta is nicely joined and sealed, ready for the boiling water. Pretty good. It's time to grab the tomatoes out of the oven and we'll start making the tomato sauce for the pasta. Absolutely perfect. Nice. Okay, these tomatoes are absolutely perfect. Nicely caramelised. And just take the bay leaves out that we put in earlier because they don't blend up very well vital that you squeeze the garlic out of its papery shells they don't blend up very well and try and get as much of the juices as possible it's going to make a very vital part of the sauce and we'll just see what its consistency is like it looks very good it's nice and smooth Not too many big bits can I get some assistance to make the sauce? <laughs> I'll just need a pot, thanks Helen. We'll go and add some wine to the sauce. They're so easy to use compared to electrics. Okay. Just got a little bit of white wine. Doesn't really matter what it is. About half a cup should be more than enough. Let that boil off. You don't want too much of the alcohol flavour, just the white wine flavour. A lot of chefs like to burn it off at this stage. I don't know if it work. Oh it is. Add in the tomato sauce as possible. If you like you can add a little bit of salt and pepper to it but it should be sweet enough and there should be enough taste. Good. It's very good. Okay I'll just check the the crumble and see if it's cooking properly. It's looking very good. It's really starting to get some juices there. Yeah, the fruit's nice and soft. We'll just leave it in there for about another 10 minutes and it'll be ready to serve. The water's starting to come up to the boil. I'll just add a little bit of olive oil to make it easier to cook the pasta. Maybe a little bit. And it's already salted. Beautiful pasta we prepared earlier. Just pop them into the boiling water and they should float to the surface when they're ready. Just give them a bit of a turn over so they cook properly. That should only take about two or three minutes. Okay, we're now going to take the ravioli out of the pot. Let them 
drain for a second so you don't get too much moisture on them. They should steam off before you get to the table. It just makes it a lot easier than putting it in a colander, which is very risky. This is the ravioli I've just cooked and we have the beautiful tomato sauce, the baked tomatoes and garlic and onion. Just a small amount is more than enough. It's very, very rich. And a small garnish of freshly picked basil from our garden. And there you have it. Cockle ravioli with a tomato sauce. And I hope it tastes good. There's the butter actually comes out of the ravioli, creating a sauce. <laughs> that is good. That is very good. <laughs> okay, it's time to get the crumble out of the oven. Just wander up there and see if it's ready. Mm. Oh, that smells wonderful. That's definitely ready. Bubbling away nicely. Perfectly ready for the meal. Get a nice spoonful of this beautiful peach and rhubarb crumble. Quick taste to see how it turned out. Mm. Perfect. <laughs> and there we have it. Peach and rhubarb crumble. And this is what's possible with food grown in your own backyard sourced from your own backyard. Anyone can do this at home. This is good cooking. <laughs> I should have blended that cinnamon up. <laughs> With a funny ending. <laughs> Everyone want to come in and have a taste? Very, very hot, be careful. Yeah. So what do you think guys? Is it edible? Yummy! <laughs> <laughs> we didn't kill it. We saved it. We saved it. <laughs> <laughs>